Hey love bugs, it's Rosalind back at you one more again. I hope everybody is doing blessed. I'm doing blessed and highly favored and definitely hope uh, the same for you. And if this is your first time stopping by my channel, much love to you and welcome into my returning subs, my grown extended beautiful family as always. Thank you so much for the love and support. It is truly appreciated. So with that being said, much love to all. Namaste, love and blessings, love and light and many blessings are definitely coming your way. And if you have been watching my videos for a while and have not already, please drop a line. I would love the chance to get to know you as much as you're getting to know me. And if you feel like the videos just give you a really good vibe, you know, please go ahead and drop a line. I mean, uh, go ahead and give a thumbs up and share. I was greatly appreciate it. And a video I'm doing today is called Twin Flame 101. Hey, Okus, stop it. Um, you had to stop expecting you out through other people you know i think I'm, i was gonna make a video out of this a while back and i heard that and it is so true a lot of times where we end up gaining disappointment hurt shame anger resentment anything in the narrative of a negative um is that a lot of times we we go back in our mind and we go through a checklist you know why people do us this way why people do us that way you know um i would never do anybody like that i would never do this you know and a lot of times we don't realize universe will set us in, in situations with people just for us to be able to learn these harsh lessons and that's mainly a lot of times where we get put in situations especially with toxic people and um it gets for us to be able to learn ourselves because it's like a lot of times we don't realize other people mirror us in different ways that we we um we need to learn about ourselves and when we get on that vibration of learning how to heal You'll start noticing how, uh, you know, you will start changing by different things that you tend to entertain, you tend to uh, uh, tolerate. And um, these are the things that we had to be able to learn, you know, uh, and it creates a solid boundary. Because a lot of times with us empaths, we got trust issues. We place love in people that don't love us back. You know, we, we put our energy all in different situations and people that is not doing the same for us. And these are the different things that it can create a, a hailstorm of a havoc for us. You know, it can really break us down. Or we can allow ourselves to take that as a life lesson and being able to appreciate it for what it is and move on and just be very selective. You know, you, you, you catch these boundaries, not just with other people, but with yourself. It's just like, is this representing you on a good vibration? Um, are you allowing yourself to take it personal on other people's issues? They're at war with themselves and they're trying to bring that war to you. Even though we're warriors, not every, every war is not our battle. You got to be able to lay that sword down and that gun down at times like, oh, no, this is yours. You're like, oh, I need you to help me out of this. I need you to pray for me. No, this is something I can pray for you, but this is something you're going to have to help yourself out of because we're, we're all doing karma clearing. We're all doing it. And it's just like, you know, with the ascension that's going on, ascension is really hitting heavy. Solstice, solstice is really hitting heavy right now and it'll be certain things where your energy will go up and down up and down up and down your emotions will be all over the place and you'll be feeling like a whole hot mess but these are the different things that we're going through you know i tell people all real quick i don't care you know i got a lot of haters and enemies that watch me i don't care i would love for you to know yes i go through hell i go through depression i go through anger i'll be ready to catch a charge like i'll be ready to want to fight any and everybody i'll be wanting to fight myself like square up you know i want to be that way but i'm keeping it real you know, when you are allowing yourself to go through a healing process, you're going to have to face everything that you go through. And when we're doing that, that's not a hard pill for us to always digest. You know, you're going to have different things that's going to trigger you. You're going to have different things that is going to uh, really get up under your skin. But then you have to be able, you know, there'll be times where I got to just... You know, and just breathe and be able to say, you know what, th these things are, you know, taking you on this emotional ro ro roller coaster, but it's going to be at that point where you're going to enjoy the heck out of that ride because it brought you in so many different situations. Hold on, y'all. My, my, my baby cat want to come in. Hold on just a second. Yeah, so we're, we're going to go through a lot of different things into our life and it, it'll really teach us some harsh lessons and a lot of times we've got to really go through some hell to get there to be able to, it's like you got to go through hell to get a little taste of heaven. You know, and it's just preparing you for that. Oh, hold on, y'all. Gotta write that down. Sorry about that. They told me to write that down. But yeah, it's true. You you go through hell to get a taste of heaven. You're creating your own heaven. You know, we're all living in our own personal purgatory, so you might as well go ahead. It's like, what is all this going for? Because you you're creating your own taste of heaven when you're doing that. 
you know you go through your different moments in life you know and it's just like um it's preparing you for something that you, you you can never imagine you know you're you're becoming a person that you never imagined you're you're finding yourself in ways that was not expected you know you go through these different things and a lot of times it's hard for you to be grateful for those type of situations okay sorry <laughs> they told me don't do that because you that's another content that you're supposed to go through so i was like okay sorry spirit <laughs> you know it's like you gotta go through that but it, it's just different times that you have to be able to go through these different things in life and just really look because a lot of times they're telling you you know and there there's times you have to really allow yourself when you look back just looking instead of looking back not reminding yourself of the past what you're going through or whatever or keep allowing yourself to open that door but you look back just to see how far you come and a lot of times it's hard to do that you you be getting up under your own skin you know and it's, it's just like because i know when i went to go looking for uh different uh posts because i was running out of posts and i didn't feel like going all the way back after all those screenshots i got I said, let me go on one of my girls' page because it's like the ones that I got today was from Awaken, um, what is it, Inner Goddess? Awaken something goddess. I forgot what it is, but that girl, I love her post. I love her energy. She bring out a message funny. But I was like, oh, let me go on there. And it was like different things that I was seeing on there about that. And it was just like you uh when it was showing all this stuff that was going on because i'm just like wondering why are my emotions all over the place i'll be ready to get mad and just talk you know when you talk out loud to the universe and it's okay you know you're telling them how you feel you, you're angry you're sad you're mad you're happy you're grateful all these different things and they're telling you sit with that emotion don't unpack with it but sit with that emotion these are the different things that's going through that because it's just the fact is when you see that and you're experiencing that you'll notice how different people are you have to understand that everybody don't have the same mindset as you everybody don't have the same heart as you you can be that person that is so good to people and it don't make it to that point where it's going to be a guarantee that you're going it's, it's going to be reciprocated you know i had to be able to allow myself to do that because there'll be sometimes you know even being here you know, um, it got to the point where it was so many people I was helping and I had this negative vibration of every time I would help people and it's not every single person I was helping, but it was a few. It was a heavy few that um, were uh, very grateful for the things that I do and we still interact, you know, it, it'll be every once in a blue moon or whatever, cause I, you know, I don't take it that personal because we all got lives, we all got our own things that we got going on and people will stop by or t people will text or people will call or whatever and that's fine. But there'll be different people that I would help and I would not have any kind of heavy negative energy in the world and when I tell you that it was king cut cutthroat, like wishing something bad on me doing this and doing that and i had to get to that point where it almost came to that point where i said i'm going to stop helping people all together if it's not here dropping comments and we reciprocating back there it wasn't going to go no further than that and universe and god had to be able to tell me don't be like that because not everybody is like that you know we're all going through growth and when you're going through growth it's it, you're going to hit somebody's ego in some kind of way where it's going to make them feel some type of way. It's not me being arrogant, conceited, or feeling like I'm above anybody. But there'll be different times where I somebody don't rub me the wrong way and I say I didn't want to deal with it. And it was just like I had to really check myself. That person that brought something to you that you, that you really need, it learned you. It learned you, it taught you in some kind of way. And it, it, the ego really pushed that button on that. Like I don't want to talk to that person like that. You know, they know this and knew that. And it was about that. But there were they were being honest but that was that honesty i wasn't trying to sit well it wasn't sitting well with me but i knew in the inside when i finally calmed down i knew i was right so it's not about me sitting up here saying it's always that's happening to me because i've done it to people i can keep it real <laughs> you know i've done that where i don't stop talking to people because i felt some kind of you know some kind of um superiority issue you know and it was it, it's just like that's what we do we're all mirrors to something because there's sometimes people can take that with a grain of salt and just be like throw it over the shoulder saying thank you I needed that this is something I need to learn about myself this is something I need to work about myself because there'll be different times where we can talk to people and people will feel comfortable enough to tell me something is like Rosalind I don't feel like I'm strong enough to do this I don't feel like I'm strong enough to do that and then it will be I, I get that I've felt that before but when you can keep it real with somebody who's genuine with you 
you're like, hey, you and, and you get you have to be able to remind sometimes because we are so sometimes we're so used to being around people that will prey on your weakness and they see that good heart with you and they will run with it. They will finesse the mess out of you with it and it will belittle you. I've had people do that to me and there'll be sometimes I was just sit there and it got to that point where it came to that point where I was like an alley cat. Go ahead, put me in that corner if you want to. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, I fight. You know, but now it's just like if I see you, I say, "Oh, you trying to get me out of my emotions of peace, ain't you?" Okay, block, delete, boom, boom. You know, and I had to be able to do that. But it, it's just like it came to that point where I was think so negative of those people because it's like I did nothing but good to you. You know, I've helped you out. I helped you see things within yourself you weren't able to see, and a lot of times we don't realize that when you hit genuine, because it's scary, because it can be a, a catch twenty two. And time, good and a bad, the blessing and a curse. You can get people to see that mess in you, and it will tear you down and make you doubt yourself in every existence of le levels of layers to that. Because they see that light in you, and they do not want you to discover that whatsoever. And that's all because of what they got going on with themselves. Because they see something in you that that, that is just like true potential, true power, true light. You know, you ignite some stuff. You are your own. You you know your own extinguisher. You know, not your own extinguisher. What's that? You your own flam flam flammable uh, vice. You know, you can do that, and you can be your own extinguisher towards the haters and stuff like that. But it's just at that point, you have to be able to allow yourself to not expect you to come from other people. That's what when we we get when we see the words and the actions and the vibration is not all in alignment because they always tell you, you know, don't listen to the words, listen to the actions. But now I'm at that point in life now. Listen to the words, look at the action, but check that energy. Check that energy because a lot of times some fake fraudulent people can be oh you know because they they can read empaths because especially when they know i don't know there's some of these dark empaths they 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 do stuff and it's just like you got to be quiet at times and if something telling you your gut like mm, well, let me not say that in front of them let me not say that when you get to that point where you got to be selective in front of certain people i'm gonna stop talking to you all together because if i should be able to, i should be able to tell you from my heart from the depth of my chest how i'm feeling about something and you should be okay with that if this is my life, you should be okay with that. All of us got different journeys and nobody should judge a journey. But I've had to deal with that a lot in my life. That's why I tell people a lot of times, even when I get on one-on-one, -on -one, I don't tell my story too much to many, too many people because it starts touching a nerve. And it, when you touch it, your nerve, it touches mine. And I don't have time for that because it's not my choice in the matter. Even though they tell you... um, Even though it, it, it's just like when you go through... You know, different things like that. It's it's like uh, every lesson is learned, but you got to be able to appreciate it at the same time. Even when that mess hurts you, even when it hits you deep, you know, and all those different things. You go through things, you see some things that you don't want to see. You don't felt some things you don't even want to touch or even open your mouth up to tell other people, you know. And I've, I've had people tell me, Rosalind, you're really strong just for the things that you I do know about you. And a lot of time I tell people I'm very, very selective about what I open up and tell. You know, just because I had to learn life lessons. Not everybody needs to know your story. Not everybody needs to know your background. Not everybody needs to know everything about you. Because when they do, they learn you, they study you. And there are certain people that appreciate that and being able to use that to carry on. But there will be different people who use that as a weapon against you. And I had to be able to learn that. You know? And it's like when we're as empath we're as warriors we all have a story we all all have an experience into our lives where they're using that as an example to show the impossible is possible within you and you're telling your story about the things that you have faced the things you have gone through the things that you have overcome and there's a lot of things that it, it will leave people in the shock of what you have faced into your life you know and it is not easy to be who you are and it's just like when you look at a characteristic and a lot of times some people when they find find my videos and they're like oh you know I dropped off on this Hayoka video and I don't know if I'm sure or not and I tell people all the time you know I didn't know what I was until I came to one of the fire ritual dreams a few times it was like three days back to back to back and they kept telling me that and I'm just like you know how can I be that and they tell you checkpoint your life 
you have been that type of person at times where you had to catch yourself after you don't said the things that you have said. And you were like, did you just say that out loud? I'm like, yeah, I did. You know, or there'll be different times that you had to really speak your tone, really speak your mind. And it wasn't to be a hurtful, but sometimes it can be, you know, where you had spoke your mind and it shocked people. You know, you, you use jokes to out bring out serious matters. You tend to take things in the most hardest way possible to be able to face. You know? And and for that you tend to face a lot of wars that are uh that is brought to you for no particular reason. You know, and a lot of times it's hard for you to be able to face that. And it is it's going to get to that point when you have dealt with these things, you have felt these things, you have endured these things. It'll get to that point where it, it brings out a lot of emotions. It brings out a lot. is opening scars. And that's what we're doing right now is really opening scars. Like it done probably keloid and it's nothing disrespectful about anybody who get keloids. But it's just like the way they're showing me is it could be like a keloid or something didn't heal right like if you got a broken leg and it just didn't heal right didn't set it right you, right now you're opening up that wound so you can understand why did it not set like it was supposed to or why why did it keloid over why these different things oh okay or you you got a scar that got infected you know because there's certain things we're trying to heal but we're not allowing ourselves to address it so it can fully heal you know and when you're doing those different things, it's, it, it is, you know, uh, it can be a, a lot. It can be a lot. It can be really a lot. And it would be, you know, for example, I got a, a cut on my finger. I don't know if y'all can see that right there where you can see that. I cut off my whole thumb at work. And, and still to this day, I get complex where I just jerk like that where I can't stand to see people with knives close to their fingers. I didn't go to the hospital because my, you know, I was smoking weed right before I, I on my break because it was like my, my my manager was really making me mad. And I said before I catch a whole case today because I need my job, let me go out here and smoke me a couple of hits. And then it was just talking to me and I was like, "You okay? Yeah." Let me go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. I just nick myself. Oh motherfucker! You know, and just falling out. I had to find one of my friends that I knew that smoked too. Hey, I need you to help me. And they were like, where all this blood come from? And they knew if I didn't want to go. They thought because I didn't want to go to the hospital, which was one of the little reasons why I didn't want to go to the hospital because they were going to tell you, hey, accident report, we got to take a piss test. You know, and I already lost my job right then and there. But it was the main thing is that I didn't like going to the hospitals because my first year I, I stayed in the hospital. Like, I, I mean, I had things in my life that was like, it almost damn near killed me. Like, I done died and came right back. And thank God for the spirit of my daddy. He brought me back every single time, you know. And it, it was just like, the, every time I get, every time I get close to Father's Day, it really become a trigger for me. And it was just like, I can still remember that scar, you know. And it was just, I didn't think it was that deep until uh, my ex, he was telling me, <laughs> you know, I'll bandage it up. And I took that mess off, and when I told you my whole thumb came off, I was like, motherfucker, oh, <laughs> and I had to put it back, you know, and I was just like, ever since then, it reminds me of that, it reminds me that I still have, I, I still have uh, ticks from that situation, from that, and that was like back in 2014, you know, and I said it happened on Father's Day, and as you know, I see a picture of my daddy, and he had his hand like that, and we had the same scar around the same time. And I was like, what the, you know, and it was just really crazy. Because it's just like, I never met my daddy. And then, you know, seeing we had the same scar around the same time. That was really crazy to me. But, you know, going through those things, it's just like, you know, you've been having to really take a break. You know, you've been tired. You've been really moody lately. You you could have been in that, that point where you, you had to be in the isolation. And it's like, even... If you're being watched, even if you're being mocked, you know, you're going through different things. You know, I, I deal with a lot of that. Excessive vibration. Watch everything, listen to everything I do. Excessive vibration. And it's, it, uh, I'm not an excessive, but obsessive vibration. And I it used to get on my nerves about that, but it's just like you, you are a walking trigger. You know, 
people start getting worried when you when you doing things and it got to that point where I used to get angry when I had people mock me about me going through things about my struggle it was very funny you know but then I had to walk away yeah you know, I was like oh okay you want to treat me like a joke I'll walk away like it's funny it's okay you know and I had to be at that point where it was like universe had to tell me allow them to laugh at you allow them to mock you the big difference between you and them those are the main people that are not facing their issues because when you do you don't mock people that are going through struggle you'll have empathy for them because you know what it felt like to be in that type of situation you can just understand and that's the problem with us at times and there's some it messes me up because there's some empaths that are like that like if you feel diff deeply and that's what angered me a lot about different people if you knew how that felt why would you even approach somebody and think that's funny you know, and I always had to tell people that way. Until the shoe's on the other foot, you will never know how that feels. And if you did, you know how it felt to be like that. Then something's seriously wrong with you when you inflict pain on other people. When you know you have, you have endured that same thing. You know, I went through that my whole life. You know, I did that because that was some stuff I normalized. And I had to really allow, really allow myself to understand I was very toxic I was very narcissistic you know and I had to really humble myself I had to face some things that I because I didn't know what a narcissist was until I started doing my YouTube videos I used to hear all about a lot what the hell is a narcissist you know what's a sociopath I didn't know you know I didn't and studying stuff like that but until I opened up in my spirituality it had me trying to understand the background of my life why why was I adopted into a narcissistic family you know my my biological father God you know please don't think I'm disrespecting you but had narcissistic traits as well as well as my grandfather and different things that that stuff fell about you know and going through all those different things we had to heal you know even when my dad it felt like when my dad passed away he was healing at the same time because we would talk every day and it was different things that it would hit him deep that he had to see me go through you know and he had to be able to learn the same thing from what was passed on with me because of the things we've gone through in life and it's just like a lot of times you would be in your fields and you have every right to be because we have human experience why would people treat me like that why you know when I, I lend out of hand to help you give you a shirt off my back and you rip the rest of my clothes off and burn them or I put my hand out to help you and you take it and then you stab me you know and we can feel that way but you have to be at that point just because certain people are like that sometimes people are rotten to the core don't judge that one apple and try to take down the whole tree you know there's gonna be a couple of people like that you appreciate them you know if you still standing strong and those people didn't make you bitter those people didn't make you close off those type of people didn't make you break down and stop living you appreciate them you appreciate them you know, there's a lot of times where you, you have probably been programmed in that type of situation where it was like people are very hateful, you know, and it was just like with me growing up, seeing my parents always, if it wasn't drinking, they were arguing. It, it didn't matter what it was, you know, and it, it was different things where I had to see that and then I end up being exposed to it so much, I started attracting that. I started being that way. You know, but the old, old th the whole thing that I can say about that situation, I was the only one who was able to admit my issues behind that. You know, other people that was in my family that I talked to, it, it, it was something about they wanted to make excuses. Of. They never wanted to call themselves, yeah, I'm a narcissist. I'm very verbal abusive, you know, <laughs> and that's what I like to do. That's what I want to do. I want to be able to corrupt you. I want to be able to do that, you know, but I was the only one in that. Like my mom, she, you know, um, God rest her soul, you know, uh, before she passed, she became a totally different person. And I'm so proud of her for that. And I love her so much because we were very toxic. 
you know and it was just like you know like I tell her you know, I always hear her at times and I always apologize to her you know for the different things that I caused her because I caused her so much pain I was so disrespectful you know and I always had to apologize for that but then she was just like always tell me don't take that full role by yourself you, you know your, your daddy and I, I don't call that dude my daddy I said her ex-husband or that dude or the folk up the street you know I was just like that dude you know um make me look at my mom in a different way you know he, he didn't it was him that was the issue but he tried to make it seem like it was my mom and it was totally not my mom you know and he was very abusive to her you know and ran her to the ground when it happened you know and I didn't have, I wasn't able to find out the truth until after my mom died. And then it really hit the fan after my biological father died. So it was just like going through those different things. It was just like, you know, this is my father. Why would he ever do that? You know, you adopted me. You're supposed to protect me. And you did all these different things. And it was just so much. I had to even go through hypnotherapy. And that's one thing after they did that to me, I, I promised myself I would never let somebody hypnotize me. And they did that and they violated me in such a bad way. But it was like going through all those different things. I had to get to the root of my problem on why was it so hard for me to let that dude go. Why was it at that point? Because it's just like the rage was bad. Because I literally got on the phone and, and threatened his life. Like when finding out the root of everything that you did to me when it came to my father. The things that you, you kept from me. The different things that y'all manipulated. All those different things. I, I was willing to go to jail for that and it took me to that point where I had to go through a dive deep on healing really dive deep because it was just like if I didn't I'd be in prison because I was like I'm gonna get her first and then I'm gonna come after you and I'm gonna let you watch and it was that bad and it had to be at that point like I'm not even going to give them that pleasure to do that you know and it reminded me and it's not even the same thing, but it's just, I, I can really understand that. It reminds me of the movie is Seven. And I love that movie. I play that movie. I'll probably watch it today. But uh, with, uh, what's his name? Morgan Freeman and Brad Pitt. And you get to the end, and I ain't going to say definitely what happened. But he told him, if you do this, if you take this man's life, you will allow him to win. And that man was just, it, and it, it, when I watched it, even thinking about it, it just made me emotional. But just seeing how Brad just lost it. Like, no, you did not do this to me. I, I, I can't believe you just did this to me. And he, you can tell he was going in and out of it. Like, he'd get angry and then he'd get mad and get angry and then get mad and get angry. You know, and he just had that gun and it was like, no. He was trying to tell old dude, shut up, shut up, shut up. You know, and he, and he knew what he was doing. He knew what he was doing. And it's like the seven deadly sins. He knew exactly what he was doing. And he ended up killing that man. And you let him win. And he was like, at that point, you did what you did. I don't care. And I had, it took me back to that point when I was in rage. You know, and I, I mean, when I saw, when I listened text messages, telling me, you know, everything I felt about him. And I had to go to God and I had to apologize how I said it. I said, I'm not going to take back excuse my language take back shit I said I meant exactly what I said you know and I'm glad I didn't fulfill those because it's just like you know death is too good for you because it's like when you have lost everything else I lost my kids behind this situation you know you put me in hell you got people that I, I've had children with and connected into this that's how far deep it go you know and you well and let my life go and it was just like something I really had to allow myself to heal. And it got to that point where I would not allow you to win. Because that makes me you. You know, and that's where the generation of that curse is going to stop at. Because it's just like your dad did it to you. And you became worse than your dad by doing that to me over something that had nothing to do with me. It was basically jealousy over my father. You know, it ain't had nothing to do with him. They ain't had nothing to do with me. And, you know, and it would be times where I sat here and cried and I cried, had suicidal thoughts and cried again. Like I can never, never, ever, I couldn't sleep at night knowing I'm trying to take my child's life over something, over some woman or some man. I would never sit up here and jeopardize my children over some person I'm married to. If it's something come to a choice like that, I would choose my children over my marriage 
that you ain't worth all that. That love, that that's where it stops at right there. But it came to that point. I can't expect you out of you. I can't expect me out of you. Because I got three girls. Regardless, even though me and my children don't talk because of the situation, I would never choose some dude over my children regardless of what goes on because that's still my blood regardless if it's adopted or not that's that i took an oath to protect my children they'd be mad as hell at them today but let somebody touch a hair on their head i'm fighting and that that's i've always been like that people always say you know regardless of what they say about rosa let somebody come in for her kids she had honey I'm, I'm a mama bear over my kids i don't care you know and i've always been that way you know but it comes to a point where I can look back at my life, you know, and it was hard for me to let that go. And I feel good when I can actually say this and not actually have, you know, my energy didn't change. You know, I had to really expect myself to be able to say I'm proud of myself because I came so far. You know, you are going through some different things where you lost a parent that you didn't even know. There was your parent and you knew this whole time and you talked to him this whole time and you never had a chance to meet him. And on top of that, your adopted family knew the whole time. You know, you had to be able to get through that. You had to be able to heal. You had to force yourself to heal. And it's just like something like that, You it don't end well for situations like that. I can actually say that, you know, I'm telling the story without really telling the story. But going through something like that you don't it don't end well especially when when it has something to do with family that's supposed to protect you and you on your own you don't have no one except you know i, I got people here you know my situation and they still there and i always tell them when I, when i tell the story you know and i love them so much for that they never judged me they stayed there you know and I, it's good but it, it's just like when they when they got me to say hey i need you to tell about this story I'm like, look, I just don't heal from this and make peace with it. But it's just like sometimes you don't know somebody needs to hear that story. You don't know the pathway of somebody's destruction is going to. You know, you, you will lead yourself down a bad road because of how people treated you. You know, you be, you be like Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, V for Vendetta. Don't allow somebody to make you want to kill somebody or, or take their life over something like that because somebody corrupts, somebody's dark, somebody's narcissistic. Let God handle that karma for you. God can do far more damage. Karma can do far more damage than you can ever touch. And you know, and it can be at times where it can be so hurtful of what somebody did and you feel like they done got away with things. They didn't. Karma deal with them every day. Trust me. Karma deal with them every day. Just because you don't see it, it's happening. It's happening. A lot of times they'll walk around like they're not phased. And that war is going deep. And when it happens like that, don't seek victory. Don't seek happiness. Don't laugh at that person. Don't mock me. Because I used to be that type of person. I will say it in front of the person's face. That's what you get. And God was ever really good to me. It would be a thousand times of what you made me feel. Because this is only a snippet of how you made me feel. You have to understand when you do that. You become that person that hurts you. Hurt people hurt people. You know hurt people will hurt people. And it's at that point where you have to pray for your enemies. Because they far more more damaged than you ever can be. Because when you're like that. You a big difference between you and them because you're facing your wars, you're facing your demons, you're facing your scars, you're facing your pain. They are not. They choose to use sex. They you choose to use other people to keep themselves busy, addictions, all those other things. You are facing yours. You may get angry. You may get hurt. You may be depressed. You may be feeling like you're suicidal. All those different things. But you're allowing yourself to move forward. That's the greatest power. That's the best revenge you can ever do to somebody who's done that. And that's the reason why God will, God will sit up here and tell you. Stop expecting people to be you through you. You're not going to get it. Especially if you're a genuine person. There are going to be people that's going to love you for that. And they'll hold you close. Because it's like loyal people don't surprise me. Of people that's trifling. You deal with that all the time. But what surprises you when a person stay loyal even when you're not around. 
even when you're not around. And when you're you're going through these different things into your life, you're going to need to pray. Because it's like people going to want to get under your skin. People don't like it when you change. People don't like it when you heal. It becomes their... And it's, you have to be able to understand. You got to tell yourself. It's more their issue than it is yours. You know? You're going through these different things into your life. You have to understand. You know, everybody don't have that same mindset as you. Just because you're good to people ain't guaranteed they're going to be good back to you. But where, where your, your test of healing is, your test of change, is how you treat people that mishandle you. How you handle people that mishandle you. It made me remind me of that saying. He's like, that's where your true test is. How you handle people that mishandle you. Quiet silence speaks so much. When you don't go back and get at people. You know? And it, it's just like I said, it, it's not about, you know, um, me telling a part of my story. It's not about, you know, making a narrative about my family and all those different things. Because I'm not, I, I mean, when I can honestly tell you and honestly tell you from the depth of my heart, I appreciate every single one of them that did that. Family I don't know. Family I do know. Family I trusted. It took me a long time to get to that point where I said, I appreciate the hell out of you. Because it showed me so much where I gained my power from. If I didn't get broke, I wouldn't be able to know how to build myself up. And I built myself up like titanium, Teflar. You know, it may, you know, I may be dent, maybe scarred, maybe bumped, bruised. But you can't knock me down. You can't, can't do that. You know, we're protected. You go through different things. And a lot of times you feel like, how am I protected? And I go through so much pain. Got to go through so much sorrow, setback, struggle. This is where your strength comes from. You would never know who you truly are until you dealt with that war. You went through that war. You got grimy. You got gutter. You know, you had to be able to go through stuff like that. You know, there'll be different times I'll sit here and I cry and I get angry. I had to be able to get that hate out of my heart. I had to forgive people that was not even forgivable. I had to take a sorry for people that weren't even sorry. They still keep trying to do stuff. And I had to be able to say, don't allow yourself to... It, it, you get better energy when you allow yourself to not lose some sleep over something you can't change your control only you can change how you react to that and you don't even react that's the best reaction you can have and just observe okay why is that happening that person wants to get up in your skin that person wants to hold you back set yourself around people that want to see you fly set yourself around people that want that, that wants to see you soar they want to see you thrive they're very uh encouraging very inspiring to you they want to see you win those are the type of people it's not no jealousy it's not no competition not no cock blocking spirit blocking whatever you know those are the type of people you need to be around but also appreciate the people that tried to hold you back appreciate the people that hurt you you know because both of them you needed both of those type of people to get where you are when you get to that point you know and it's just like when i see the stuff that i go through and it really makes me go back. Cause I, like I said, I have a chip on my shoulder. I got to knock that mess off so quick. Hey, you done came a long way. Don't go there. <laughs> Don't go there. You know, God got you. You know, karma got you too. You clearing it. Does it go through hell? And that lets you know you clearing your slate. And that mess ain't easy. So you keep doing you. So I hope you are able to resonate with the content of this video, y'all. Much love to y'all. I hope y'all have a blessed weekend. It's Sunday, but I don't know when this video is going to come out. <laughs> you know? It was just like different when I was supposed to be doing. Uh, what was it? I was supposed to do live chat the other day, but y'all so that gone tired. It was just like for the last couple of nights. It, it was just like my, my sleep pattern was so off. I would have like an hour of sleep and be up for like 36 hours. You know? Doing all type of crazy stuff. But it, it was just like... I said, I'll do that back on a different time when I know my, my, my you know, universe is like, you trying to jump the gun, stop doing so much. And it was just like, you be wanting to, because you're trying to be, uh, uh, what, what is it, productive and stuff like that. But the universe is like, nah, you're doing too much. Slow your roll. You do that on another time. I said, okay, all right. Never mind. And I was like, all right, all right, all right. But I hope you were able to resonate with the content of this video, y'all. Um, I would love to give a post notification out to Sam C. Much love to you, girl. I hope all is well. And who uh, um, uh, Lorraine Brandon, much love to you as well. If you're new to my channel, welcome. It's so good to have you. Um, drop a line. I would love a chance to uh, get to know you. Um, I leave all my contact um, information in the description box below. 
and it's all about uh, spiritual networking to be able to help you understand your path of purpose um, just to be able to understand the different things that you're going through and uh, trying to get you to move forward or you know just being able to get a broader perspective of that and I love to be able to help with that you know I do it all the time and it's just you know just being able to understand people and knowing people on a different level they can really vibe with you in that way is truly a blessing so I love that but um what was I gonna say but yeah it's all about that just to be able to spiritual network and just be able to help you find yourself or there are different things that people want to um you know share with me about stuff because we're all learning off of each other and helping me teacher teaching it was like a teacher student thing with everybody back and forth back and forth but i hope um just to be able to help out the way i can and um just being able to to do that and whatever we speak on is confidential so i help out in the best way possible if you're ever interested in podcasting as well i do podcasting i also share my podcast on the community page in case you're interested in listening to it um, it was really fun for me. You know, I tell people, I say, hey, you know, you ought to get into podcasting. It was real easy. You know, I'm just like, it's nervous. What am I going to talk about? Just flow with it. Just flow with it. It's like you're talking to people on the phone. Except, you know, you got to be a little bit discreet. <laughs> you know, because sometimes we can get a little bit too comfortable when we on the phone for our friends. But as I still tell people, it's just like you're talking on the phone. Except like you're doing it for public. <laughs> you know, but you got to just, you know, hey, you got to do what it do. But I always tell people, you got a story to tell. You don't went through some stuff. You never know how that, that can be an inspiration for somebody else. But like I said, you know, I, I short, shared that I was guided to do that. But it's, it's like I said, I'm not going to talk about nobody negatively because it's like, it, you know, my family and the things that I went through was truly a blessing to me. It really took me a long time to be able to say that it's truly a blessing to me. And it, it feels a lot better when you can actually make peace with that, you know. And that really took me a long way to be able to do that without you know doing that without sitting up here getting angry getting in my emotions and if i get in my emotions it's all about gratitude to be able to say that because i really wouldn't know how far i can really go and how determined i can truly be and you know uh it, it really took me through some stuff but it took it, it made me overcome a lot of things in my life dude i'm not the same person i used to be so you know but anyways i hope you were able to resonate with content of that video y'all i hope you have a blessed prosperous day wherever day of the week it is this uh uploads um you know whatever you're trying to manifest into your life you know i, I send whatever vibes that you're needing whatever prayers you're needing uplift you, you're needing i'm sending that towards your way a million times fold and you know stay persistent and consistent even if you have to take many breaks you still get back up and stay persistent and consistent you know, the universe is trying to tell me to tell you you are so close. Do not give up right now. Do not do that. You know, the devil stay busy. They always say the devil get busy when he, he know God trying to make a blessing for you or sending a blessing your way. So don't get distracted by the naysayers. Don't get distracted by your surroundings. Just keep going. You know, just keep going. And, you know, stay persistent and consistent. The devil stay busy. Don't get that dude nothing to do. Tell him he a whole lie. You know, and not today, not tomorrow at all. So, because he'll maybe try to convince you today. And your blessing may be opening doors for you tomorrow. So, keep going. And um, you'll see me on my next video. Much love to you. Namaste. Shalom. Uh, I say, Grand Risings. Peace. <laughs>